Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about three different rocks that can be sometimes confused and I know that I personally have had trouble with knowing exactly what belongs in what category. And so I did some research because I was really curious the definition of these different rocks, how they came to be, and how to identify them. So I'm gonna show you what I have done to help me understand those three type of rocks. And those three are agates, chalcedony, and jasper. So I have some different resources here that I have used that has really helped me understand the difference between these three rocks. The first one here is this book. It is Rocks and Minerals of Minnesota. I live in Minnesota, so this is why I got this book. It has been really, really helpful to help me identify the different rocks that I've collected throughout my rock counting journey. I believe that there is books like this for every state. So if you're in a different state, you can find the one for yours. And this is really helpful. It gives you lots of different definitions, pictures, um, how the rocks have formed and things like that. So we're gonna take a look at this today. The second book that has been really helpful to me is the Smithsonian Handbook, Rocks and Minerals. Looks like this. This one has really helped me when I'm trying to kind of do more of a deep dive on my rocks and um, really understanding how to find exactly what a certain, especially tricky rock is looking at the hardness, the specific gravity, and things like that. This book has been really helpful for that. And this last little manual, I just got this, but I really like it because it's really quick and easy. It has different pictures. And it has on the side, Lake Superior Agate Types, Agate Impostors, and Comet Agate Characteristics. So this little guide has been helpful too because I definitely am a visual learner. So this has helped me identify some of the, the Agate Impostors. I'm gonna show you some of the rocks and show you the differences between the Agates, the Chalcedonies, and the Jaspers. I'm also gonna be using probably just one tool today, and it is this handy dandy flashlight. Um, a flashlight or some sort of light source like the sun is gonna help you especially identify the difference between Jaspers and then the Chalcedonies and the Agates. So starting off, I wanted to show you guys the book that has been the most helpful for me when I have been trying to identify the difference between the Jaspers, the Agates, and the Chalcedonies. Here are some of the pages that I've bookmarked that I wanted to show. When I first thought about Agates, I always thought that, you know, there were only a couple of different kinds. We have our Agates that look like this. They have their waxy luster, the conchoidal fracturing, and basically that an Agate looks like that one right there. But this book has really helped to show me that there are so many different types of agates. There are agates with adhesional banding. There are cold water agates. There are agate eyes. They look like this. There are faulted agates. There are agate floaters. The agate floaters get their name because they have these banded pieces that kind of look like they are floating in the middle of a sea of quartz, which I thought was pretty cool. There are fragmented membrane agates. There are agate geodes. There are gravitationally banded agates. So these ones are pushed down by um, gravity, which is the only way that scientists think that they could have such level and even lines. There are moss agates. So these ones almost look mossy. There are paint agates. This is my absolute favorite because I have a really cool specimen of this. There are peeled agates. So these ones are peeled because they've been so worn away by nature. There are sagenetic, I believe I'm saying that correct, agates. There are skipanatum agates. There are southern Minnesota agates, which look like this. There are thunder agates. They look like this. There are tube agates. And you can also find different rocks that have agate veins, which are really, really cool. One of my favorite agate samples is this type of agate. There are water washed agates. So these have been so worn away by nature that they look really smooth. They already almost look like they're polished. There are whirl agates. They look like this. 
So as you can see, there are so many different kinds of agates. And if you only knew an agate as looking like this, or any agates that look like this, it'd be really hard to find anything other than agates that look like this. So that's why I think it's important to find a book similar to this one that really helps you identify and narrow down the differences between all of the different kinds of rocks that you're looking for. Here's a close-up of the Smithsonian Rocks and Mineral book. In this book, because they are so similar, all of the jaspers, agates, and chalcedonies are shown on just one page here because they're all a version of the micro, micro crystalline variety of quartz. So you can see it kind of goes through and shows here is some different types of chalcedony. Here is even a different type of agate. This is a fortification agate. This is showing you carnelian. Here we have some different forms of jasper and something else that I'm not as familiar with, which is the cryosoprase. So this book is nice because it tells you the specific gravity of these rocks, what their cleavage looks like, and how they fracture. It also tells you up at the top what group it's from, the composition, and the hardness. Here is another book that I thought was very interesting to help identify agates and their imposters. It goes through and shows all the different types of agates. And here is an easier picture to show you kind of all of those different agates that we've talked about in one. And then it starts to go into the imposters. And there are lots of different ones that they think could be imposters. So it really helps when I'm trying to identify, do I really have an agate or do I not? I think the jaspers are the easiest to identify between the chalcedonies and the agates. So I'm going to show you those jaspers first. So here's the first example of a jasper. Now, one thing to note about jasper that makes it really easy to identify if it's a jasper or not is taking a flashlight and seeing if light can shine through it. So as you can see, you cannot see any light shining through this piece of jasper, which helps to tell you, nope, this is not an agate. This is a piece of jasper. Here are two more types of jasper. You can also see that no, there is no light shining through at all on either of these specimens. you can see that no, this is definitely not an agate. One of my absolute favorite types of jasper is this type of jasper right here. This is called a Mary Ellen jasper. And you can see that this, again, is a jasper because no light is shining through it. If I put some water on this, you can really see the whirls and the patterns in this one. All right, next up, we are going to be looking at the difference and the origins behind the chalcedonies and the agates. So these are the two that are a little bit more difficult to identify the difference between the two because they are so, so similar. So let's take a look at those. Here are some examples of chalcedony. Now, you can may see that these look very similar to an agate. So you can see the light shining through there like that. So this can help tell you that no, it is not a jasper. It is either chalcedony or agate. So then you have to look for any sort of banding. As I look along this chalcedony, I can see that although it's very beautiful, there are, is not any banding, which tells me that no, this is actually chalcedony. Here's another example. Again, you can really see the glow on this one. The light shines right through it. But again, there's some spots here, but there's no banding, so this is still just a piece of chalcedony. Here's another one. See the light shining right through it. But again, if we look close, you can't see any banding. This is another piece of chalcedony. Last up is a big piece like this. This, you can also see the light right through it which helps tell us that this is chalcedony. Some other things that you might get chalcedony goofed up with is quartz. So here's another piece that looks very, very similar. 
However, if you look close at the two, you'll notice something a little bit different about the luster. Do you see how it's sparkly here? As opposed to on this one, it's more dull and waxy. So again, this one is more sparkly. You can see it sparkle. And the other one is waxy. You can also see that it does not fracture the way that this one does. You can see the pitting in this one. And you can see the types of fractures that this has. Then what's even easier to identify would be a large piece of quartz. So you can see the definite luster is completely different. If you look close, you can also see that it is individual crystals that are very easily defined and easily seen, as opposed to something like this, where it is more waxy. So we look at all three of them, you can see that our bottom one here leans a lot closer to this one than it does to this one. So all of these are those different types of agates that we were looking at in the book. So this one you can see is a mossy faulted agate. Here's one with agate veins. This one, my all time favorite, which is a paint agate. Here is a floater. You can also see some adhesional banding. An adhesional banded agate. Potato skin, pitted texture, waxy luster. This one kind of stumps me because I'm not sure if it's just chalcedony or if it is an agate. Kind of makes me think it's an agate because it's got that circle texture. Here you can see it's got that black smudge, just like the southern agate. Here's a very, very tiny gravitationally banded agate. Here's an example of a peeled agate and a faulted agate. Here is a good example of a trickster jasper. So when I first picked this up, I looked at it and I thought, this is definitely an agate. But if I take my flashlight, so there are always gonna be ones that are a little bit more tricky, a little bit more difficult, and ones that, you know, you just might not know, like this one. Also, some agates, although this we know is an agate, you can't see through. But ones like this, you very easily can. It's that beautiful agate glow. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully it helped you understand some of the differences and the origins behind these three different rocks, our jaspers, our chalcedonies, and our agates. I know that when I first started out, it was really difficult for me to identify the differences between those. Looking for videos, I never really found one that helped me identify the differences. So I thought that I could make one and hopefully it helped you out too. Uh, if you liked this video and if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, go ahead and hit that like button. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, I would absolutely love that. I'm trying really hard to grow the channel um, and make it really fun and entertaining for you guys. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and learning all about the cool hobby that is rock hounding. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!